The pleura, or pleural lining, is a membrane that covers both the inner chest wall and the surface of the lungs. The narrow space between these layers is known as the pleural cavity. They are part of what is called in medical terms the mesothelium, which consists of all similar membranes that cover and provide protection and lubrication for most of the bodily organs. Any infections or adverse conditions that affect this space or the membranes, whether bacterial, viral, or cancerous, are called pleural diseases. As with all diseases, there are associated risk factors that can affect one's chances of being affected. Mesothelioma. Of course, the pleural disease that gets the most attention in the media is mesothelioma, or cancer of the mesothelium. This is a highly aggressive, malignant cancer that commonly spreads to nearby organs and has even been found in distant areas such as the gastrointestinal tract and the brain. It has been demonstrated that mesothelioma is caused by prolonged and or heavy exposure to asbestos fibers. These fibers are inhaled deep into the lungs where they literally burrow into the inner layer tissues of the alveoli or air sacs. Eventually, they go straight through to the outer surface of the lung and the pleura, where their interactions with living cells somehow cause mutations at the level of the DNA. This is what causes them to become cancerous, although medical researchers are not completely certain of the exact mechanism, or why some people exposed to asbestos develop mesothelioma, and many do not. It is believed by some medical researchers that part of the risk factor may be connected to a contaminated polio vaccine administered to children between 1957 and 1963. The contaminant was a virus called SV40. This virus has been found in human mesothelioma tissues and has been known to induce mesothelioma in laboratory animal subjects. It is also associated with other types of cancer. Definite link between human mesothelioma and SV40 alone has not yet been proven. There is evidence that SV40 may trigger the formation of mesothelioma cells in the presence of asbestos fibers. However, the amount of asbestos to which one is exposed appears to have a great deal of bearing on whether or not mesothelioma develops. However, this factor seems to vary widely from one individual to another. Some people who have worked around asbestos for years never develop the disease. Others contract mesothelioma after only brief exposure. In general, however, the chance of contracting mesothelioma is proportionate to the amount and length of asbestos exposure. One risk factor that increases the chances exponentially is tobacco use. According to several studies, a cigarette smoker exposed to asbestos has a chance 90 times greater of contracting mesothelioma than a non-smoker. Asbestosis. Asbestosis is caused by the buildup of scar tissue on lung surfaces. The scar tissue is fibrous, causing the lung and pleural tissues to become stiff. As the scar tissue builds up, pressure is put on the lungs, and they are increasingly unable to expand. This occurs because antibodies, known as macrophages, recognize microscopic asbestos fibers as a foreign or exogenous pathogen and attempt to attack them. Because these fibers are silicon, not carbon-based, however, the caustic acids produced by macrophages that would normally destroy organic viruses and bacteria have little effect. Instead, the macrophages are shredded on the sharp extrusions of asbestos fibers. This releases their digestive acid and allows it to attack healthy tissues. As these chemical burns heal, scar tissue forms and builds up over time. Again, the risk factor is exposure to asbestos fibers and is dependent on the length of time and amount of exposure. Occupational risk factors. Occupational risk factors. Because asbestos was so aggressively marketed as a miracle mineral so widely for so long, it is difficult to find an occupation in which substantial asbestos exposure risk has not been a factor. At the top of the list are those who have worked in asbestos mining and manufacture. These workers were working with asbestos directly and therefore had the heaviest ongoing exposure. 
also at risk, are family members of these workers. The reason is that asbestos fibers were frequently lodged in the hair and clothing of these workers and were subsequently carried into the home. Beyond asbestos mining and manufacture, almost anyone who has worked in industrial manufacturing and or production, as well as construction and building and or demolition, has almost certainly been exposed to asbestos to some degree. In general, if there was fireproofing or danger from extreme heat was a factor in any way, there was asbestos somewhere. Other risk factors. There are genetic and pathogenetic factors as well as elements of a person's health history that and make one more predisposed to pleural disease. One of these is the existence of pleural plaques. Pleural plaques are areas of the inner rib cage and the diaphragm that have become fibrous and calcified. In other words, the tissue becomes stiff and inflexible. This is usually caused by genetic factors but can be attributed to environmental factors such as asbestos exposure. A study conducted in Uppsala, Sweden between 1963 and 1980 indicated that people with pleural plaques ran an increased risk of lung cancer. Unfortunately, the study did not provide controls for smoking and therefore the results have been questioned. Regardless of whether mesothelioma or other pleural diseases are connected with pleural plaques caused by disease or the environment, it is clear that such plaques by themselves do not cause mesothelioma or lung cancers by themselves. Invariably, there is a history of asbestos exposure. Non-asbestos pleural disease. Pleural conditions not due to environmental factors and occupational asbestos exposure are actually common. These involve infections and fluid buildup in the pleural cavity, but are not in fact diseases, but rather symptoms of bacterial and or viral infections. They include pneumonia, pleurisy, and pleural effusion, as well as empyema. While these symptoms can be life-threatening and require professional medical attention, they are usually quite treatable with antibiotics and other medications. Thank you for watching. This video was produced by asbestos.net, a leading resource on all aspects of asbestos and mesothelioma. Our priority is to inform victims about the devastating effects of asbestos exposure, mesothelioma, asbestos cancer, asbestosis, and other asbestos-related diseases and to advise them with a wealth of information. Individuals whose lives have been touched by mesothelioma have numerous questions and concerns. Their caregivers and family members also need accurate, reliable information. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos cancer and need more information, we invite you to visit and explore the thousands of pages of oncologist-reviewed material on asbestos.net to call our convenient toll-free number shown below and speak with a mesothelioma specialist or to use the simple contact form found at asbestos.net to request a free copy of our informative books, custom inserts, and DVD. Asbestos.net, information and help for patients and families.